Okay. <laughs> okay, got it. Okay, so mastitis, what is it? Mastitis is an infection of the mammary gland that starts in the teat of a dairy cow. Um, so just real quick, oh, I don't know what I did. Um, this is the teat, and each teat lies in a different quarter that's separated by this median suspensory ligament. And those quarters are the quarters that you're going to be checking for the mastitis. Yeah, so basically you have one udder but four mammary glands. Yeah. And so, um, it can also be caused by like damage chemically, not just by bacteria infection or physical damage to the teeth. Um, there's two different types of mastitis. There's clinical and subclinical. Clinical is like when you can actually see the teeth being inflamed and red, and sometimes it'll feel warm to the touch, and it causes pain, and you can tell because it'll kick at you when you do that. Um, and so you can also see it in the milk when it's clinical. <coughs> And it's like when the milk comes out in a yellowish, kind of chunky um, form instead of just clear milk. Um, and then subclinical is when there's an infection present, but it's not really as apparent. And so all quarters can have the subclinical mastitis, but only one quarter at a time usually prevents or, uh, presents the uh, clinical mastitis. So it would be like you can have it in all four quarters and just one would be red really bad. Um, or you could have it in just one and the other three are very healthy. Yeah, or five very healthy. Yeah. Um, so then, this is a normal udder, obviously, and this is a good looking one, this one I pulled from a dairy show. And then this one, you can see that this one is showing signs of clinical mastitis. It's swollen, it's red, it's longer than all the other ones, and it looks really uncomfortable. So... And then... You know, in if cows were out in nature without mankind, you would never get that big of udder. No. Not at all. Because that's actually dangerous. Yeah. Um, that's the take home message. A big udder is dangerous. <laughs> it yeah, is. Because they can, they can blow out. It's yeah. terrible and for a cow. Yeah. They can blow out and then <coughs> not produce well and have lots of health issues. Um, but yeah. And then the common causes. So. Um, obviously, you can transfer it physically by contaminated equipment when you're milking and if you aren't wearing gloves and you just go from cow to cow and don't wash your hands, or it can happen environmentally. And so for the environmental one, this would be like um, dirty bedding that they lay down in, or if another cow's had it and they lay in the same area. And um, another environmental cause would be like dirty unclipped udders and it holds all the bacteria up in there and it makes it easier and more success susceptible to getting mastitis. And then for the microbes, um, these two are the most common instructed staph, but um, really it's any microbe that like lives off of lactose. Mm. And so then how do you know if they have mastitis if you can't exactly see it being inflamed and stuff? Um, you do a strip check and that's when you squeeze the top of the teat before you milk it and you squeeze it a few times so milk bloods down. And if it comes out and it smells funny or it's in chunks or it doesn't come out very well and you're having a hard time getting lactose to or the milk to flow out, um, that's usually a pretty good sign. And then the other way to know for sure is the California mastitis test and that does a somatic stem cell count. And the higher the somatic stem cells um, shows that there's mastitis in that quarter. And so usually it's like a purple fluid, which you'll see in this video, and um, it'll get darker in the quarter where there's mastitis and it'll stay really light and milky colored, but light purple if it doesn't have it. And usually it'll get thick too in the quarter that has. Okay, um, before you go on, can you explain this more? Somatic stem cell test? So that has to do with um, it's uh, cells that are fighting the infection, I believe. Okay, so it's actually white yeah. blood cells. Yeah. That's another way of saying that. Yeah. Yeah, because it's like, isn't it the, yeah, SCC, right? Yeah. Stem, uh, no, SSC, right? No, SCC. SCC. So that but somatic, oh yeah, somatic okay, somatic SCC, yeah. somatic cell count. Yeah. Yeah. And the somatic is here, another way of saying white blood cells. Yeah. Yeah. Are we going to see a video? Yeah. Excellent. The test consists of a full dial tunnel and CMT solution. That dial, yeah. Dial that. What test? 
take a sample of notes from each quadrant to each of the four wells in the CMT paddle. Pour out the excess milk down to the marker line in each of the wells. Add in equal amounts of CMT solution to each well in the paddle. Rotate the paddle in a circular motion to mix the contents. High somatic cell found milk will cause a thickening of the mixture and with a strong positive result it will thicken to a gel. Wow. So that's basically how you know which quarter it's in for sure. I got it. I do have a question on that. Is that a uh, test temperature sensitive? Does it rely on the I don't believe so. Okay. I guess the milk would come out body temperature. Yeah. It would come out the same temperature. Yeah, I'm just wondering that the uh, material that you uh, pump in, I'm just curious, does that have to be like at room temperature? Because you know how some farms... Uh, no, usually it's at room temperature, I believe. Well, okay, so then... I've never chilled right, Because you know how on some farms, things are get in the middle of win winter, There's hard. it's hard to find any heat any place. So you'd keep that bottle at room yeah, temperature. Yeah, room temperature. Okay. Um, so then the next thing is going to be prevention. So common practice prevention usually prevents you from getting mastitis. So this blue thing right here is a teat dipper and usually it has an iodine solution in it and you will dip each teat and then use disposable towels to wipe it off and clean off the teats after they've been sanitized for a little bit. And then um, you'll dip them again after you, um, you're done milking them just to make sure everything stays clean and then you let it air dry on there. Um, another way to prevent is to do keeping your bedding area clean. And I know there's a lot of different ways of doing this. A lot of times people will scrape manure twice a day when they milk. Um, other people will like replace sand every so often so the bacteria is lower. And then I know at Purdue they like use a water flushing system and flush it out each time they milk. Um, and then another way to prevent is to clip the udder area because we talked about how the long hair will cause bacteria to be able to get in easier and stick and dirt and stuff. And then antibiotic therapy. So this is something that they use when they dry cows off and it's an antibiotic and they, and they take this little tip and they stick it up in the tea part of the way and then they release the antibiotic and that's supposed to help prevent it from when they come back into lactation cycle. Okay, so sinus. somebody in the audience may not know what drying off a cow means. Um, it's when they come to the end of their lactation cycle after they've calved and they aren't producing as much milk and so you just make sure that they're done milking and you would just feed them like any other heifer. So you stop milking, yeah. that's drying off rather than yeah. drying off with a towel. You know how yeah. you could get yeah. that confused? Yeah. I think you had a comment over there. Oh, question. Yeah. Um, did you say what clipping the under area meant? Just like you like trim the fur. You the take the like, hair, there's like, always some hair on the It's like right. a buzz cut. You basically like, usually it's like extra furry down there and you just trim it. Mm. But it's usually like clear hair. So that's why normally you wouldn't see it mm. as well. Um, okay, and then for treatment, so if you get a cow that has mastitis, um, it's a similar sort of tube that you would use, but you use it now to per, or to uh, clear up what you have going on. During lactation. Yeah, during lactation. Um, and it's done by this intramammary infusion, and that's when um, you take the tip of that and you insert it into the teat canal and the street canal, and you go about halfway up, and then once you've injected the antibiotic, you massage it up into the teat so that it stays up in there and it gets to where it needs to go. And this used to be you would put it all the way up in the street canal, but then they realized that that can cause more mastitis. <laughs> um, so, things up. Yeah, so now they only do it halfway. Um, and then another thing you can do is oxytocin treatments, and you would give an injection of oxytocin and you would milk that quarter that has it a lot because if you get rid of the milk all the time, then that bacteria that likes lactose won't reform as much. Um, and then if it's chronic and you can't get any, it to go away using either one of those, you would pull them because otherwise it's just going to keep spreading throughout your herd. Yeah, and probably there's some genetic component. So yeah. that female, if you use her to breed again and she has heifers, maybe you're perpetuating Yeah, they would mastitis. be just disposed, disposed to uh, right. having that. 
So now I got a question. How about withdrawal period? Because now this is during lactation. The yes. other one you didn't have to worry about because you stop milking and you don't have to worry about antibiotics and milk, but here you do. So for this, um, what would happen is, is usually it's like a 30 day period, I wanna say. And then what you would do is each time you milk using a machine, you would milk it and then put it into a dump bucket instead of milking it into the main tank. And then you'd have to sanitize the equipment before you use it again on another cow. And you would do that for the full 30 days and then usually they add a little extra time on to that because they want to be extra long? cautious. Is it 30 yeah. days? Okay, I would and not so that long. If they accidentally milk it into the tank, mm -hmm. they do the somatic stem cell count on the whole tank and if it's high enough, they just dump it all. Yeah. So, yeah, so and then you would milk that cow at the end. Yeah. Yeah. If you could. And then right? so you can clean it out. And make her the last one you milk. Yeah. And that's it. Okay. Okay, questions, comments about mastitis. Surely somebody has some experience with and I'll let you point, Colleen. I just know they make like today pace for horses too, because we've used that track before when like a resource gets infected. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, well I think any any mammal that has mammary glands yeah. can have mastitis because mastitis literally means inflammation of the breast tissue. Mast yeah is a prefix meaning breast, and itis is always inflammation. Anybody else have anything with mammary glands? Um, I have a question. So how often do they check for mastitis? You check it every time you go to milk a cow. So every time before you put the milkers on, you just run up and you do the strip test. And if it feels like extra warm, or if it looks red or inflamed, obviously it's mastitis. Or if you like have a hard time and it's coming out chunky, mm -hmm. that's usually a pretty good sign. So you you always do the strip test. Yeah, but and you then, don't do that that four chamber. Yeah, test. you only do the four chamber test if you've done a strip test Suspect. and it looks like it could be mastitis. So even in like large dairy operations, oh, yeah. they check them all the time. Oh, okay. Yeah, because it's just a, it, you're there already. Yeah. You're gonna put the milker on, so you just okay. do a couple squeezes yeah. and then put the thing on. But okay. you always check each quarter each time too. Yeah. What's interesting about mastitis, and they've done this someplace and maybe ran into it. Uh, so the milk flows out of each mammary gland separately and it goes through separate hose for a while. If you put a temperature probe where the milk is flowing from each teat, the one that has mastitis will be higher temperature, the milk will be a higher temperature. And I don't know how, if anybody's doing that, but I've seen it before on like an infrared video. Okay. You can see where like the milk coming from that one quarter mm -hmm. is just like, it's just hotter. Right. But if you, you know, with all the computers nowadays, yeah. you could have a computer just monitor it and have some set point that it was above. I believe they do that for robotic milking. Okay, maybe they do, yeah. Anybody else with, uh, any? how about goats or sheep, mastitis, mammary gland? Sometime I will tell you how one midnight years ago I had to perform an emergency mastectomy on a sheep. A complete emergency, uh, no, emergency complete mastectomy on a sheep, you, that had gotten um, her udder halfway torn off by some dogs. Oh. We were on an experiment. And uh, you know, most people were to euthanize the animal. But we had one animal killed one just superficial wound, but I, and you, you'll you never run into anybody else, to take a whole mammary gland, there's two of them in sheep, off and then sew back the skin after a dog attacked it. Because you know, like when you're doing surgery, you make nice lines with scalpels, right? And you can sew that. How about a dog? Does a dog do that? No, not at all. But you should know that mammary glands are modified skin glands. So I, I'll tell you quickly because we have a little time. I used a blunt probe. Of course, we had to knock the sheep down with uh, anesthetic and stuff. And we were all set for it because we were doing surgery on sheep. So it, it was we were all ready for not the dog attack but for surgery. So we put her dorsal recumbency you know, and in, intubated her. And then this mammary gland is halfway off. There's some blood vessels bleeding. So then I had to find all the major blood vessels and tie them off. And we had a cautery machine too, so we probably cauterized some of the smaller ones, and then I remember dissecting the mammary gland off, usually with a blunt probe, because if you do a scalpel, then you're cutting things, right? But a blunt probe more separates things. So I, the mammary, the two mammary glands were there, but they were like displaced. So I remember 
taking the mammary gland off and then putting it in the garbage, I mean literally from the sheep. And then, probably the hardest part, after we got all the bleeding stopped, was sew the skin together because you can imagine what dogs would do. And I called it the ultimate tummy tuck. Because boy, I'll tell you what, I was pulling skin from all over. I think my suture line went like that. It was just incredible. I've never done it since. I hope I never have to do it again. I probably won't because I'm not doing sheep surgery anymore. But it was it was a neat experience. Just something impromptu. Did she live? She lived. What kind of question is that? <laughs> Of course she lived, because we estimated how much blood she lost, right? Remember, if you ever take 230 for a minute, we do the blood volume uh, calculation. And she lived, yes. She was no longer on our experiment, though. Thank you. You guys are fun.